Today on Bridge City Sessions, we're going to be taking a look at the Parallax plugin by Neural DSP. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So uh, this has actually been sitting on my desk for a while now, and um, I just have not had the time to get around to this plugin. It's just been buried underneath a bunch of other stuff. I don't need to make the excuses for you. You know what it is. I'm super glad that I finally got to dive into this plugin and check it out because I've been wanting to do this for a while now and just haven't had the time to do it. So I finally got to sit down and really dive into this plugin. And I gotta say, it's a really, really cool plugin. Now, before I say anything here, I need to disclose, I'm a Neural DSP fanboy. I love the plugins, I love the company. I think what they're doing is amazing. And this new plugin is a little interesting for me. It seems that they're stepping away from modeling amplifiers and just coming out with their own standalone plugin, which from a business perspective makes a lot of sense, right? I imagine that they have to license the products that they're emulating from other companies and that what this product is is them trying to break away from that and create their own plugins without going through that licensing process. Look, I could be totally wrong. I'm not involved in the company. All I do is I do gear reviews on their products every now and then and uh, I really enjoy them. With that being said, I was slightly disappointed with this product. And let me explain what that means before you get all keyboard activist on me, okay? Like I said, I love their products. I just thought that this was a little bit of a misstep in the way that it was represented. I was really excited to check out this plugin because it was advertised as an all-in-one bass processing plugin. And that's not really what it is. What it is, it's an all-in-one bass tone processing plugin. And you can get a killer distorted bass tone out of it. Actually, you probably get a killer clean bass tone out of it too if you dial it in, but I didn't try that. I just did the distorted bass tone. But I still have to do external processing to get the bass to sit correctly in the mix. And there are some things that I just felt like could be tweaked in the plugin, and maybe we'll see that in future updates, but there's just a few things that I felt like were lacking a little bit. Like, for example, the compressor has no attack and release settings. Uh, the EQ bands do not have any way to control the slope. And there's no way to select different types of distortion. Like if you want a more crunchy distortion, or if you want like a more tight distortion, you can't really choose those options. Now where that comes in really handy is it doesn't take long to figure it out and dial in a bass tone and you don't get lost in the endless options, which I actually really appreciate. I like when plugins are simple and easy to use and intuitive. And this plugin definitely fits that bill, but like I said, it being an all-in-one bass processing plugin, it's just not really what it is. The other thing that I use all the time that is not included with the plugin is there's no sidechain processing for the low end. Like if you could sidechain the bass drum into the compressor of the low end, I feel like that would really elevate this plugin quite a bit. I don't know, maybe we'll see those updates in the future. I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping. With all that being said, I still think it's a really awesome product. And I think that if you're looking for something to dial in a really good bass tone, that this is probably it. I would actually rate this probably above the dark glass plugin in terms of the way it sounds sonically. I think it sounds a little bit better and I think it's more versatile. But if you really like that interface of using an actual amp in the UI, then you're probably not gonna like this plugin because this plugin is a little bit more straightforward and basic. It's a very clean, good looking plugin, but it doesn't have that sort of user interface where it looks like an amplifier. Anyways, again, with all that being said, I still think it's a really awesome plugin and it sounds fucking killer. So let's cut over here and uh, I'll show you what it sounds like. So this is the main user interface you see when you open the plugin. Um, you have your input, your gate, uh, your mode, you can go stereo or mono, oversampling, normal or high, and then here's all the different preset settings. You can save presets, load, um, or import presets rather, and then here's all the presets that come with the plugin. Uh, if you're not really sure about this plugin because it's not a traditional UI that you're used to from the Neural DSP plugins, which the user interface is essentially just the amplifier typically. I would suggest just going through and picking one of the presets and then just kind of tweaking it to your needs. But uh, moving on here, and then you have a master output up here. Um, okay, and then click on the little parallax thing here. It will show you which version you're running. And yeah. And then down below you have like an actual visual EQ spectrum analyzer. Um, that show you the three different bands that you can operate. Uh, you have a low, a mid, and a high. Uh, the low can be adjusted here. You can turn the, the level up and down and you can move the low pass just by grabbing and dragging it where you want it. And then down below you have an on off switch which will bypass the low end and a compression knob, and then uh, low pass and low level if you wanna adjust those down here rather than grabbing and dragging it. And then same thing with the mids, 
and the highs, except on the mid, you only have a level and the drive. You can't actually change the EQ spectrum that you're adjusting with the mids. And then on the high end, very similar to the, the low end, you can change the high pass and the level either by clicking and dragging this up here or by moving the knobs down here. And um, the difference in between the high and the low is the high end actually has a drive, whereas the low end just has the compression. And then finally, there is an equalizer here at the end of the chain. So that's it for this page. And then if you click up here to the little round circular icon, uh, you can actually go into the cab IR section, which is where you can select your different microphones or you can load a custom IR if you have one. And even though it's cosmetically a lot different, the functionality is pretty similar to all of their other products here as far as the cabinet, mic setup, and impulse responses go. Um, you can grab and drag this to whatever position you would like your microphone in, or you can use the knobs to adjust it here. You can turn it on and off, change the level, change the phase. Uh, all that good stuff. Okay, so I have my session opened up here in Reaper, and we're just gonna dial in a bass tone using the Parallax plugin here. Let me show you what this sounds like without the plugin engaged. Pretty boring. So this is just the DI directly from the bass. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the Parallax plugin here engage it and we are just going to start with a preset uh no we won't we'll just go default and we'll dial in our own how about that okay so i'm just going to go ahead and start playing this back and dial something in So one of the things that I really like about this plugin is you can actually go through and turn on and off the different bands just so that you can focus down and really specifically get the sound you're looking for in that frequency range. So right now I'm just dialing in the mids first. Um, the mids seem to be the more troubling ear piercing frequencies to me. So I just want to get that taken care of right out the gate. And... I think that sounds pretty good. Now let's do the highs. Let's listen to them together. Okay, not bad. So let's check out the low here. And uh, so the difference in the low end is there's a compressor rather than a drive knob, and it still has the same uh, low and high pass. The mid band does not have a low and high pass, so you were stuck with that frequency range right there. Uh, but let's dial in the low end real quick. So you can really stomp down on those low frequencies and just get them like crushed. Um, I don't wanna do that quite. What I'm gonna do is I'm just dialing in the compressor until it's just engaging where those peaks are. Which is right about there. And we're gonna move the pass down a little bit. right about there. Okay, uh, let's hear all of those frequencies together. That's dialed in pretty well here. Um, I'm probably going to EQ some of this out a little bit. Let's listen to it.
Okay, so uh, I have that dialed in pretty much how I want it. Um, now let's go to the cab IR section. And we'll just do one at a time here. Um, I don't know, it seems to make life a little bit easier. So uh, first one I'm gonna focus on is I want a close mic that's gonna capture all of the detail in the bass sound. So let's focus on that right now. Okay, so I got that one dialed in. Now let's go ahead and jump over here to the other one. And what I want on this one is I want it to catch the bass and sort of the ambience that's going on here. So let's dial that guy in. Okay, let's listen to them both together. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and save this preset here. Click the disc here to save it. And I'm gonna call this Taze Bass. Balls. So why not? Now that I have that bass dialed in, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to listen back to it in the actual mix. By the way, I should probably mention this. For the guitars on this mix, I'm actually using the Fortin Nameless plugin, which you can see here. Those are the beautiful settings. So uh, if you're curious or you want to mess with this at all, um, that's what I have it paired with. Both are Neural DSP products and both are fucking killer. So real quick, while we're talking about this, uh, the Nameless is kind of my go-to plugin for guitar tone. I don't spend much time using anything else these days. Um, mostly it's just the Nameless, just because it sounds so killer right out of the box. I mean, you could just throw this plug in on a guitar DI and you know it's gonna sound fucking awesome. So. That's why I use that guy a lot. Um, but anyways, this is what they sound like together. And let's listen to the full mix. I think there's a breakdown in the song. Let's go forward to that and you can kind of hear the bass punch a little bit more. Okay, so there you have it. What I dialed that tone in and like, what are we looking at here? Just a couple minutes. Uh, I've been recording for 14 minutes. So yeah, I probably dialed that tone in less than 10 minutes. This plugin's really, really easy to use. At first I was a little bit hesitant with the UI changes and instead of going for like just a direct amp look, 
to more of like a producer plugin sort of look. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but that makes sense in my head of what the differences are. Actually, now I really appreciate it. Anyways, that's all from me, guys. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Hmm, I never know how to end these things. It's so weird. It's like, I've enjoyed our time together. I hope you've enjoyed our time together, and I will see you next time. All right, later. All right, guys, what do you think of the Parallax plugin? Is it something you'd use in a mix? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye.